Okay, thank you very much. I am just going to go ahead and share my screen to start with. Because everything is going to be done on our screen today. So, as you all know, I'm a missionary at the BYU Family History Library, and I do quite a bit with technology. And first of all, I just want to let you know that Google searches or DuckDuckGo or Bing or whatever you choose to use as searches, those are your best friends. Whenever, you have, whenever I have a question, I do a Google search. Why is my computer doing this? How do I? So I just suggest that you do searches whenever you have a problem. The first thing we want to talk about today, and this class is going to be very basic, is we're going to talk about the mouse. So this is a basic mouse, and it has three parts that we're going to work with today. It has a left mouse, mouse button, a scroll wheel, and a right mouse button. <clears throat> the left mouse button is the normal click that directly interacts with files and links. You double click it to launch a program or a file. You use it to select and highlight objects or text. You use it to drag and drop files, documents, pictures, and whatever you want to the different places. So today, before we go into anything deep, I want to show you how to change the size and color of your mouse pointer. As I'm getting older, it's harder for me to see the pointer. And when I found myself trying to do this to figure out where my pointer was, I decided that I needed to make it a little bigger. So there are three ways to get to settings that I'm going to show you. The first one is to go down to the Windows button and then click on Settings. The second way to do it is to go to your search bar right here and type in settings. Then you can just click on settings or open to get to it. But today we are going to actually do a, a shortcut to get to it. And I'm going to show you what shortcut we're using. We're going to use the Windows key and we're going to hold that down at the same time that we click the I key. So we're going to go Windows I, and it brings up settings. The next place we're going is to ease of access. When we click on ease of access, we then go to mouse pointer over here on the left. This opens up the op opportunity for us to change the pointer size and the color. Right now I'm at about a three, and I was at a one, which makes it very tiny you can take it all the way up to a 15, and that's huge. It, I think it's intrusive, so I don't like to have it that big. For our purposes today, I'll leave it at a three, so you can hopefully see what I'm doing on the screen. <clears throat> this will change your pointer to white. Everything, everywhere it is, it will be white. This one will change it to black. And then this one will change it to color. And you can choose whatever color you want your little mouse clicker to be, your pointer, or you can go and do a custom color. So you can drag it to whatever color you want it to be, and then you can even go to more if you want to change it more. The one that I use is the inverted mouse because it will change according to the background. So if it's this color. My mouse changes accordingly. I'll just show you different places. Here it's white and brown. So it just changes. So that it, it makes it visually easier for me to see where it is. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is show you a couple of things with the right mouse button on this uh, basic desktop. When you use the right mouse button, it opens a menu. So when you click on your desktop, you get this menu. So you can view, you can change the size of your icons, arrange it differently, whatever you want to do that. You can sort your, your icons and you can refresh your screen. 
You can also click on your display settings from here, which will take you to settings, but right directly to display. You can also go to your personal like your personalization screen where you can change your background or other other things that are going on in your your desktop. The other thing I want to show you is that when you right click on a file or a photo, you get a different menu. This is a photo and it will give us an option to open or other things that we can do to edit it. The nice thing is that you can rotate it if it's, uh, not, it's not rotated correctly. You can rotate it here right or left as many times as you need to get, to get it in the right position. Now the menu that comes up is usually based on what programs you have. So when I right click, I have Adobe Acrobat on my computer. So I have the option of doing things in PDF. The other option that's really nice here is that you can open with. So you have an option of whatever programs you have available, you can open it in this, in one of these options. Another thing that you can do is you can cut this, you can copy it, you can delete it, and you can rename it. The one thing that I use most often is properties because I frequently like to know how big my file is, especially if I'm going to add a memory to family search. I remember that I can only put something in that is 15 megabytes or less. So I can look here and see what size my photo is. You can do that also with Word. You can look at the properties on Word. If you look at properties on a file by right clicking and going to properties, you it will tell you the size of your whole file. But you can't put a whole file on family search. So you have to know exactly what the document size is. So you can, oops, I've got to move my screen a little. So if I go to my desktop file folder, you can see all of my files here. None of them show a size, but when I get down to my documents and photos, I have a size. If I were to open, um, for instance, this file, it gives the size of all the documents in there. And you can tell them whether it will go easily into family search or not. Uh, let's see, another thing that you can do when you right click on your desktop is you can go to new and then you can go up and open a new file or you can open other documents. If I click on Word, since I have Word, I can do that. I click on that. It opens a new document for me. I can give it a name right now, and then I can open it and work in it. But right now, I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to drag it with my left mouse button. I'm going to click on my left mouse button and just hold it while I drag it up to my recycle bin. On the recycle bin, I can double click on it and I can restore that item. We'll just do that quickly. We can do a restore this item. We have to highlight it. We can restore it or restore that item or restore all items that are in there, or we can empty it. Or we could, if we know we've just got one or two photos in there that we want to get rid of or documents, we can right click on it and just empty the recycle bin from there. All right, now, I don't know about each of you, but I can't work on my computer without having a split screen. So we're going to talk about splitting a screen. But before we do that, uh, I've been specifically asked to talk to you about how to remove your Google email if you're on a public computer or on a friend's computer. If you don't completely remove it, they have they don't have access to it if you've logged out, but they still have your email address. So if you're going to log out of your email, you sorry, I have to keep moving things around. 
So we're going to go in here and whoops, not there. We're going to go on your email and sign out. At a public computer, this doesn't come up, but this does come up. This shows that my account. So if somebody logged on to, to Gmail, like on a BYU computer, they would have my email address. And I really don't want that to be left out for everyone. So I will go to remove an account, click on that, and then I will click on the minus and say, yes, remove. And now that is completely gone. So I will have to sign in again in order to uh, get to an email. But you want to make sure you do that. And especially with Ancestry and some of the other sites, you want to absolutely be sure that you sign out because people will come in and they will have, if they go to ancestry.com, your account will come up and you will, they will have access to your account and nobody wants that. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and go to family search and I have as my home, I have set family search to be my home. And here's another thing that I was asked to tell you is that when you sign in, whoops, I was supposed to already be signed out. Sorry, we're signing, I'm signing out so I can show you. Sign in. If you're on a public computer or a friend's computer, do not click this that will keep you signed in for two weeks. We just want to make sure that we are not open to, if you forget to sign out and somebody goes to family search, they will be logged in on your account. And we want to maintain our privacy the best we can. I will do it because it's my computer. We're going to look at some different things here, but I'm going to show you how to split the screen several different ways. There are different ways to open a new window. One of them is to go up here to this, the three uh, dots, click on that and open a new window. Now we've got two windows open. Okay, so another way to open a window is to go down to the bottom on your taskbar. If, if you have Chrome on your taskbar, if you don't go wherever Chrome is and right click, Sorry, I can't see my, so if I right click there, then I can open in a new window. All right, so we've got three new windows open. And there's also another way to do this, but before we go on, I don't ever do this because it doesn't work well on my computer, but for some people it works well. If you go to your taskbar and right click on your taskbar, you can cascade the window, show the window stack, or show the window side by side. If I do that, this is what I get. And it is side by side, but it isn't very usable to me. So I will undo that. If you cascade a window, it just opens them up behind each other. So we're just going to get out of that, undo that. And we can undo this. So we are just going to eliminate one of these and I'll open the other two again, full size. Okay, so what we can do to split a screen is we can click on our Windows button. I'm going to show you that button again on our screen. This Windows button right here, while we hold that down, we are going to click either this left arrow button or the right arrow button. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my windows and do the right arrow key. Now you can see that it's moved it over to the right side of my screen. Then I can click on this one and do the same thing, only I'm going to click the left arrow button. Well, that didn't work. It normally will work. But we already, oh, because we didn't undo the cascade, it didn't. So we can just adjust it by using our double arrow. Okay, I'm going to show you one other way to split your screen. 
Well, actually two ways. Okay, while we're here, we can open a new tab. And to open a new tab, one way to do that is to just click on this plus sign. I'm going to click on this plus sign and I'll just sign, I'll go to Ancestry because that's something I always use when I'm using Family Search. And while I'm here with this tab, I'm going to use my left, left mouse button. I'm going to click on it and I am going to drag it. And now we have another another key, another button, another window, sorry. And we can click that and we can resize it. We can move it. And then we can do the same thing with this one. Okay, so that's how we split our screen. And then when I am working, if I go to Mabel here, hopefully eventually she'll come up. And I can over here on my family search tab in my left screen, I can click on Mabel. And then I can work. I can work with each of these. All right, now we're going to look at a few other things. I'm going to open a tab here and I'm going to bring up uh, another tab. I'm going to show you a couple of things with the scroll wheel. So with the scroll wheel, we can scroll up and down easily. I've worked with people that didn't use the scroll wheel, they always go to the scroll bar. And it's not always convenient to do that. And you have to go back and forth. If you're scrolling here, you're right where you can open and it's not a problem. I'm going to show you a couple more things with the right mouse. Before we, I show you on here, I'm going to show you here on Mabel. When I'm working in family search, well, when I'm working in in uh, Ancestry, I'll just show you one of my windows that I closed so I could do this class. One of my windows was this window, and this is how many tabs I have open in this window. And I usually, well, frequently I have six browser windows open, sometimes seven, and I know where everything is, so I know exactly what I'm working on. But we'll make this a little easier. If I want to work on this family and I don't want to um, close this, but I want to work on some of the children, I can right click on this link and open in a new tab. Just be aware that this doesn't always open correctly. Sometimes it opens to blank. So what if in that case, I would write I would click on him, left click, and then I would right click on his name or on person, and that will open it in a new tab. Another thing that some people do, they like to do is to right click on the tab up here. If you right click, it brings up a menu and you can open a new tab to the right, or you can duplicate the tab. If you duplicate the tab, it is exactly the same tab. And then if you want to go to one of the children or a spouse, you can just click on that and open it. And I'm going to show you a couple more things with the scroll wheel over here. The scroll wheel can be used to zoom in and out. And the way you do that, I'm going to show you this keyboard again, is we're going to use the control key. If you haven't ever used the control key, this is where it is on your keyboard. It may not be this exact size, but it will be over in this area of your keyboard. So we're going to click on the control key. And while I do that, I am going to scroll up and it's going to enlarge my screen. 
Now, if I want to make it smaller, I do hit pull this control key and scroll down and I get as small as I can go. If you can catch that thing right up here, you can reset it or you can hit control zero. And I didn't put on that on the handout, I'm sorry. But if you scroll big, you didn't get up there in time, control zero will reset it to 100%. A couple of other things I would like to show you with the right, we've already talked about how we can right click and open in a new tab. I like to do this when, for instance, if I open this and I'm on Roots Tech and I see all these things that I want to look at and I go here and I finish looking at this, then I have to go arrow back, arrow back. But if I were to right click, I could open that in a new tab. That takes me two clicks, but then I still have this and I can, X out of this, go back to my menu and click on the next one. But one thing I wanted to teach you today is how to open another tab without having to do two steps. And we're going to make our scroll wheel a third button. So to do that, we're going to hover over the link and then we're going to just click the scroll wheel. And that opens a new tab. So if we go back, we hover over the link and click the scroll wheel. We don't have to go to that menu and choose where we want to open it because we're definitely opening it here. Another thing you can do with your, let me just open one more. We have all of these tabs up here. If we're through with some of them, we can get rid of them by clicking on this X but we can also use the scroll wheel to delete something and you don't have to find that X. You can just go anywhere on the tab, click the scroll wheel and it deletes the tab. If you have, sometimes it's kind of tricky to learn how to use the scroll wheel. It can open it into this fast moving wheel, which you don't want. So I usually just use my first joint. It seems to make it easier. It doesn't have the scroll wheel moving up and down on it. Okay, now we've used the, the buttons. I would like to show one more thing. I'm going to go to a foreign language screen. If you do any researching in a foreign language, this might be helpful for you. So I will go to an, a French archive and you can see that everything is in French. If I'm scrolling down here and I want to translate this, we can translate the page, but if you're on a page that doesn't have that, you can right click and translate to English. All right, so we're going to go now to our, um, to our shortcuts. If you have your screen up, you can see them. I'll try to go through them. On our shortcuts, we're going to again, I'm just going to show you one more time. We're using the control key and we're going to hold that down while we click another key so that we can do a shortcut. If I wanted to copy this whole thing, I would hold my control key down and press A. That highlights everything on the page and I mean everything. So if, if you want to try and put this in a document, you can do that, but it really brings, it takes a long time and it can really create a mess in your document. So I don't recommend that. We're going to work a little bit with this document. So if I wanted to, 
to capture everything on this. If I wanted everything highlighted, I would make sure that I clicked on this screen, do control A, and I have this. I can then do control C, which will copy this, or I can do right click and copy. So either whichever one you do, it works. You can then put this over. You can then paste it by using Control V or right click. It brings up a different screen here for paste options when you right click. And I'll show you a little bit different the way that I paste things. And then you can experiment, but I'm going to do the Control V. And so this is completely uh, done everything that I copied. So I can save that by doing Control and S. If I want to do a Control, a Save As, for instance, if I don't want to lose my main document, but I want to have this document, I will do a, a Save As. Now, I just did a recent, my computer recently updated and save as, the shortcut for save as does not work in Word and I have to figure out why, but I can show you in a PDF how it works. So I would do control and then hold shift down while I press S and that brings up save as and I will decide where I want to save it. And then I will give it a different name because if I don't give it a different name, it will override the one that I have. Okay. So the way that you can do a save as if your control shift S doesn't work is to do F12. And I don't think that I put that on your handout. I'm sorry. So I'm going to show the, sorry, show the keyboard again. And I'm going to use F12 right up here on your keyboard. Okay, so if I hit F12, it will give me an option to, you see this is says save as, it will give me the option to save as. But again, I don't wanna save it with the same name or it will overwrite what I already have. So I give it a different name and then hit save. If I decide I don't want to keep this thing in here that I've just done, I am going to do control, control V and that undoes what I just did. If then I think, okay, maybe I really do want it, then I can hit control Y and it will come back again. Okay, now there are some other things that um, we want to look at with our shortcuts. When we're working in family search, if we, um, for instance, George has some hints. If I go to hints and I know this is him and I go to review and attach, I won't do that right now. But if I review and attach everything, then I can either go back to George by clicking here. And if I do that and I have attached this record, it will show up in his sources. If I do, okay, I'm gonna go back to where I was. If I choose not to go back, not to go here to open it, and I go back here, it will not show up unless I refresh my screen. So I would either have to hit this, will reload the page or refresh it, or you can hit Control R, or you can hit F5. And each one of those things will refresh the screen and it will bring up the sources. The same thing happens, I don't know if any of you are using Ancestry, but if you want to move something over in Ancestry, for instance, we'll go here, hopefully we'll log in really quickly. So we go here and we want to send something to family search as a as a 
uh, source. We'll scroll down here. We see everything. She's already got 31 things on here, but she doesn't have this social security application. So if I chose to send that over, I would click that and then I would save the changes. Okay, that has gone over, but if you look over here, it, it doesn't show up. There are still 31 sources, but there should be 32. So what I either have to refresh it, hit F5 or Control R to refresh that to be able, I'll do Control R. Oh, whoops, I have to, sorry, I have to be over here. I have to have clicked on this screen, Control R, and it refreshes it. And now I have 32 sources. I've seen people add this many, many times, the same source, and then at some point they refresh or they go out and come back in again and they've got that source in there a million times. So make sure that if you're moving things back and forth that you refresh your screen so that you have the sources that you've added. Okay, so back here, um, another thing that you can do with this is if you want to print either one of these, you have to make sure you're clicked on what you want to print. Control P is a shortcut to print. I have mine set to PDF. This is what I would print if I wanted to print that screen. Same over here. I can do Control P on my document and I can print from there. Um, my best friend is uh, Control Shift T, which is how I recover my tab if I accidentally close it. So if I close this and I panic because I don't want to have to go through the whole thing of pulling up a new tab, there are two ways to do it. You can click on here, you can go to history, and you can do recently closed, or you can do Control Shift T and you've got your, your tab back, no panic. So that's my favorite friend. Another shortcut that I want to show you is control N and I love this. Control N will open a new window for you. So just if I click over here on this, I'll hit control N, I get a new window. And what I love about it is if I'm over here on a document and I click Control N, I get a new document. It's so much easier than going to file and new and blank document. So I love that tab. Another thing that you can do is you, now I'll tell you that one last because we need to talk about that a little bit later. So we can do a, Control Shift T will move us back and forth between these tabs. So Control Shift T, oh, whoops, I gotta get on the right window. Control Shift T, we, oh, that's opening new tabs, I'm sorry. That was the wrong one. Control Shift Tab is the one that I wanted to show you. Control Shift Tab will take you through your tabs but you have to keep holding control shift and it will just take you back and forth through your tabs. If I did control N and opened a new window, I didn't want that open. I can hit control W and it will close the window. You wanna be careful doing that because sometimes you, if you're not clicked on the right window, you will close a window you didn't want to close. Uh, sometimes your, um, computer freezes up and it, that makes me crazy if I have a screen that freezes and I can't carry on and do what I want to do with it. And so I will click control shift escape, which will open the task manager. And then I can click and control or restart or whatever it is I need to do. I can end the task. I'm not going to do that. Another one is control Alt, delete, that brings up a menu where you can choose the task manager. 
or you can right click on your task bar down here and open the task manager that way. Okay, so another another thing that I use frequently, if for instance, I wanted to find something or I wanted to find a person or if I wanted to do a search records, we'll just do search records. And but I use this a lot with indexing is if you are if you are somewhere and you need to go back and you are on your keyboard and you don't want to use your mouse, you can hit shift T tab, shift tab will take you back through the form. It'll take you all the way back through the form, but it's very convenient if I miss something when I'm indexing, I just hit shift tab and tab back to where I need to be. And then I can fill in that, that form. So that's uh, one that I really like. Another thing I want to show you, I don't have my, my email open, but I can show you over here on this Word document is if you want to add emojis to your email or to a document, you can click the windows. Remember where the windows button is, hold the windows button down and click period and it will bring you up your emoji menu and you can just add emojis most of the time it comes in color but today we're not color friendly so we have a lot of fun things that we can do Another thing that I wanted to show you here, I will open this all the way up. Let's go to Mabel. If, if for instance, I wanted to see more of the screen, I could hit my F12 or F11. Let me show you a picture of that on the keyboard. F11 right up here will uh, make, it will get rid of everything that's up here that you don't need. Sometimes I do that if I need to take a screenshot and I can't get everything that I want on it. So then when I hit F11 again, everything comes back. If you want to take a screenshot of a document, well, anything actually. Okay, let's see. Um, it'd be nice if we had a picture of something, but okay, if we're over here and we want to take a screenshot on mine, I have to do FN key plus print screen. And then if I go over here to my document, I can do control V and I have the screenshot here. Now, so you get everything that's on your screen and then you have to go into formatting. I can format from up here on picture format, or I can right click and choose crop. When I choose crop, and there's a lot of, there's a way that we're gonna, going to learn how to do this. Well, this is in the whole wrong place, but we'll put it here to start with. Okay. I'm sorry. Since that update, I cannot do anything that I want to do with this. Anyway, there are a lot of things that you can do, but normally you can drag this, and I will work on this for later. You, you make this picture bigger. I will have to figure out what's going on with my Word document, but that's how you do it. That's how you take a screenshot. The other thing that we're going to learn is how to use our snipping tool, our snip and and sketch. And there are some different ways to use this. And we'll talk about that uh, later. So if you don't mind, we'll go into our highlighting. So if you don't mind, we'll go into our highlighting. All right. So if we're on a, let me just open this for highlighting. I wanted to get to something that we really do want to highlight. So I will just go here to 50 genealogical brick wall, 50 
solutions. And we're going to go because this is where I got this from. I'm going to, I don't, I have three, but I'm going to go to number four. And if I want to put that over here, I am going to use my left mouse key. First, I'm going to put my cursor here, and then I'm going to hold down my left mouse key and drag it as far as I want. I'll just get number four. Then I'm going to copy control C or right click copy. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use control V because then it will be like the rest of it. And it won't be if I just paste it. So that's how we paste this, how we copy and paste just using your cursor. I'm going to show you some other ways. This is basically for a Word document. So in a Word document, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. You can do just what I did is you can left click and drag it as much as you want. If you want to just um, select one word, then you're going to hold down control and shift at the same time. And you will then um, use your right or left arrow key. It'll click one word. If you keep holding control and shift and keep arrowing, it will go as far as you want it to go. Okay. Another thing that you can do is you can just hold shift and arrow. It only highlights one letter at a time. So if you're having, if you have any kind of issues with your mouse, some people have a really hard time just getting the little bit that they want. They don't want everything, but they have a hard time. So that's one way to overcome that. Um, another thing you can do is just double click on the word. And that will highlight just one word. But then when you go to highlight another one, that goes away. So you can only highlight one word at a time. If you want to select the whole line, you can put your cursor in front of what you want to select. You can then hold down the, the shift key. And then, well, let me just show you on my keyboard again. This is going to be different for everybody. It, this is different than the keyboard that I'm using. But I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to click the end key. OK, so I'm putting my cursor here. I'm clicking shift, and I'm hitting end. And that will give me one line. OK? Another way to do that is you can uh, click here and hold shift down. I'm going to show you this keyboard again because I'll make you crazy. Holding shift, I'm going to hit the down arrow key. Okay. So hold shift, hit the down arrow key. It will highlight one sentence. If you hit hold shift and hit the up arrow key or the down arrow key, it will keep going as far as you want it to go. But if you hit the up arrow key, it will actually highlight the sentence above it. So if you want to highlight a whole sentence or a whole paragraph, you can put your cursor in front of it and you can click three times. It will click, it will highlight the whole paragraph. So hit three times. Whoops, sorry. That menu is making me crazy. Three times and you get the whole the whole thing. Another way to highlight just what you want is to put your cursor there, hold shift down, and then you click wherever you want to, whatever you want to highlight, you go to the end of that. So for instance, if I'm going to highlight down here to numbers, I am going to hold shift down and click there, and it will just highlight that. So put your cursor where you want to start high, highlighting, and then you shift and click where you want to end. And then you can copy that and paste it wherever you want to. OK, so if I wanted to move something, if I don't like what I have right here, 
I can click my cursor, shift, and I'm going to take out this sentence. I can do control X because I want to paste this somewhere else. Instead of deleting it, I'm going to do control X. And then I'm going to say, okay, I want to put that right here. Then I can control V and paste that where I wanted it to be. If you don't like it, you can undo it here or do control Z. Now, if you want to get it back where it was, you can click here again or do control Z again. And it's back where it was. Okay, are we good to keep going? We're doing great. Okay. Okay, so a couple of things, a couple of other things I want to show you is, okay, I'm going to minimize that. Now, if I went to bed one night and I had my computer on sleep and it updated my computer, everything would be gone. When I woke up in the morning, all my browsers would be closed. And if I were working on something and I wanted to have that again, then I want that browser back. So if I <clears throat> X out of my browser, I'm going to lose both of them. Then I have to open my browser again by double clicking on it. And it's gone, but I really need it back. In Chrome, I'm going to go over here to these three dots, click there, and I'm going to go to history. Normally, if it's an update, it will say restore and you can restore your tabs. But I am going to go over here to history. Then I've got to go here. These were the seven tabs that I needed to have open. Well, first I need to have this one open because that was, that was open. And then I'm going to go back over here, go to my history, and restore my seven tabs. And so you've got your, your Windows back. It's basically the same. If you're using Firefox, it almost always comes up with, whoops, we had a problem. Do you want to restore your session? And you'll do that. Um, sorry. So on this menu, <clears throat> it's the same thing. You go to history and it will say restore previous session and you will do that in Firefox. Uh, just while we're here, I'm going to show you the menu is a little bit different in Firefox. When you're right clicking on a tab, you can see that it's a little different. If I right click over here, this is what we get. So you just have to get used to whatever browser you're using at the time. Edge is pretty close to the same as, um, as Chrome. So this is what this Chrome looks like. And this is what Edge looks like. If we have time, if you don't mind, I'll just show you something fun with Chrome, or not Chrome, with Edge. So with Edge, you can actually um, have it talk to you. It can have it read the page for you. So if I was here and I right click on here, I can have read aloud or control shift U would be the shortcut. So if I read aloud. The courageous German missionary who served behind the Iron Curtain by Terry Bull Montague, October 15th. Okay, well just, and then when you hit read aloud, it opens this menu, you can read it. To have it read aloud, you can stop it. But anyway, I thought that was kind of a fun voice option. All right, now that we know how to um, restore our system, um, someone has previously asked if I would teach how to do hyperlinks. And we have time, so I will do show you some different ways to do hyperlinks. I'm going to go over here. Now, there are three ways that I know of. There may be more ways, and we can do that. But I'm going to show you three ways to get to this. So this is my 50 best genealogical brick wall solutions. And if I wanted to make this into a link, 
because I didn't put all of the solutions and I want to give people an opportunity to do that. I will highlight this. Well, before I highlight that, let's go over here to this and we are going to copy this address bar. So the URL, we're going to click here and normally it will highlight the whole thing when you click on it. You can do control C or right click copy. And then when you come over here, we're going to highlight what we want to make uh, the hyperlink. And we're going to click here. The first way we're going to do it is we're going to go up to insert. We're going to go over here to links. And then we're going to click on link. Now with that highlighted, it said that's the text that's going to be just displayed. And then the cursor is down here in the address bar. Since the cursor is there, we're going to control C or right click and paste. I mean, control V, sorry, control V. Then when we say, okay, this is now a hyperlink. One thing that you need to know is that when you're working in Word, you can't just click on the hyperlink. You have to hit the control key and then you can click and it will open over here. So now we've got this open twice, okay? Now we're going to undo that. I'll show you the next way to do it. We'll make this the hyperlink. So we're going to highlight that because we've already copied this and it's still on our clipboard. We're going to right click here and we're going to go down here to link. When we click on link, it opens the insert hyperlink. We already have names highlighted. So that's what's going to be linked. And then we've got the cursor in the address bar. So we're going to control V, say OK. And now we've got that hyperlink. OK, so if we hit control and click that, it opens over here in a window. OK, now we're going to undo that. I'm going to show you if you have a link that you have in your document, I am going to paste this in my document. It's not really a link yet until I hit enter. And now it is a link. I could do control click and that would open over here. But if we have this link in here and we decide, oh, it would be really nice if this was not just a link like this, but if it was ordinary language, we would highlight this. And then we would right click and we would go down to edit hyperlink. When we edit the hyperlink, we've got, let's do this again. Okay, we're going to go here and we're going to go edit hyperlink. Now we've got the hyperlink in both places. We don't have to highlight it, we just have to, but we don't want it in both places. We want this to be ordinary text, what is displayed. So we'll go up here and delete that and we'll put whatever we want that to be. And we might put in there um, common names or brick walls. Let's put in brick walls. Well, let's put in brick wall solutions. Okay, if we put in brick wall solutions, then we hit okay. And we've changed that link to a hyperlink and we can control and click and open that in a window. If someone has also asked to find out how to save this as a PDF, if they wanted to put a document into Family Search, they would change it to a PDF. The only reason that, well, because you can't put a word document in, but if you're going to write a story that you're going to put in memories, I really recommend that you do it on a Word document first and then copy and paste it because I've had people that try to create a story and it took them so long to write the story that it timed out and their story disappeared. So it might be wise to write it in a Word document and then all you have to do is copy the whole thing, do your control A, control C, and then you just paste it in here into your story. But if you are going to use memories, whoops, 
Now let's go back to where we were. If we're going to go into memories and put that in as a document right here, then it needs to either be a picture or a PDF. It won't take Word. So if we're going to do that, we're going to go, we're going to do our save as. I have a shortcut, uh, a little link up here for save as. So I'm going to do save as. You can also go to file, save as. Maybe. I'll go to file, save as. And we decide where we're going to save it. And I will just browse. And I'll just save it to my desktop. And then I'm going to go right here where it says save as file type. I'm going to click on that. And I don't have to go all the way over to the arrow. I can just click right here. And I'm going to save that as a PDF. And then I'm going to click save. And then when I go over to my desktop, here it is as a PDF. I can open that as a PDF and I can put that in and upload that as a document. Well, thank you. I'm happy that we could do this and we've got more things that we can do if we ever want to do another class.